swelling goes down. So we win that small battle for a short period of time. We lose the entire war of healing. We end up with a chronic injury. So my advice to you is stay away from the anti-inflammatories if you can help it. I had a woman come in the office today with a very severe ankle sprain, and she took anti-inflammatory. She wrapped it up with an ACE bandage. She was on crutches, and guess what? I took her off of everything. I said, you got to start walking. you got to mobilize it. you got to get the energy going. Her leg was, was cold. It was like ice cold. She wrapped it so tight. You think she's getting any blood supply there? No. So it's all backwards in terms of traditional medicine. We want to keep the area warm. We want to keep it mobile. We don't want to elevate and get the fluid out of it. We want to keep in such a way that the body is doing its own healing process. Now, sometimes when we inject, because we're using lidocaine as a mixture with the dextrose, a person will, in two seconds, go, I can't believe it. The pain is gone. And I'll say, well, we injected lidocaine, which is an instant pain reliever, and your pain will probably come back later in the afternoon, maybe two to four hours later. Some people it doesn't. I have occasions where one injection will do the job. That's not prolotherapy, because prolotherapy, as we'll see, is a process where the tissue grows over a period of about 100 days. But there are other effects that you get from introducing a needle. We cause inflammation. Sometimes that will bring the body back into alignment. A lot of our pain is when we have an anatomical deficiency. Let's say we have bone-on-bone arthritis in the knee. That's two bones rubbing every time we move that knee. Very painful. We can inject an irritant like dextrose, and immediately the person can feel better. Inflammation starts. Those bones, because of the inflammation, will separate. That's all that knee needed. And then we'll find that collagen actually grows over a period of time and stabilizes with some collagen there, cartilage. In cartilage, there's collagen. Number of treatments and injections required per treatment are based on the type of injury in the person. I can never tell a person in advance how soon or if they're going to heal. I have people sign a consent that says there's no guarantees, and prolotherapy is considered experimental by many doctors. I want people to know that they're not coming to a faith healer where everything's going to be taken care of for them. But at the same time, the results are excellent. So beside the anti-inflammatories that people sometimes take, and they don't know they're taking anti-inflammatories, they get a headache and they take ibuprofen. So they're going to blunt the response to the healing. Also, many people lose faith in prolotherapy. They think it's going to be an instant fix. It can be, but it isn't. Most cases, it is not. It often will take, sometimes, if it's a wrist, maybe two injections to tighten up the ligaments. Wrists heal fairly quickly. Ankles actually heal very quickly. Knees take about four on average. Necks and back, sometimes eight. Bone-on-bone arthritis in the knee might be 10. It all depends. People that are very, very fit, like elite athletes, tend to heal overnight. They're magic because their body is so tuned up, their hormones are so high, everything is functioning so well, they eat properly, they've got good, good blood supply everywhere, they can heal overnight. This is Johnny Morton Jr. who used to play football. Anyone remember him? Great guy. He came in with uh, many, many different types of pain issues from playing football for years. We injected, the first thing I think I injected was his uh, gluteus maximus muscle on the bone. I'd never done it before, but it's not rocket science to do most of this once you know the anatomy. So I took a uh, two-inch needle, injected down to the bone through the gluteus muscle where his pain was. That was gone, I think, the next day. I injected many different parts of his body over the years. And uh, he's, had, he's one of these guys like myself that has excellent success with prolotherapy. So whenever he gets beat up, now he's doing cage fighting and other things like that. Um, and he's done with football. You know, he had a good career with that, but he's on to other things. So every patient heals differently. Recovery depends on overall health status and how frequently a patient uses an infected area. So I had an actor one time who lived up in Malibu, very famous guy. He was about 38 years old, and he had several points that hurt him. His knee, his elbow, and his shoulder. Okay? I did prolotherapy four times, and the fifth time he came in, 
I said, how you doing? He said, I didn't get any better. And I said, we talked about your exercise regime. Have you slowed down? And he said, yes, I did, just like you told me to. I said, what are you doing now? He says, I cut back from four hours a day to two hours a day. And I said, we don't need to meet ever again because I don't think you're going to get better. He was using the same joints over and over, expecting different results. Remember Einstein's definition of crazy? Doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. So <clears throat> when I confronted him with him, he said, this is how I make a living, and I have to make a living, so I can't really stop. So unfortunate case, because what he had was real easy to fix. This guy is C. Everett Koop. Anyone remember him, our previous Surgeon General? Wonderful, wonderful man. He was a pediatric surgeon. He took care of little children. But on the side, guess what he did? Prolotherapy. Guess who he did it to? His parents, you know, the patient's parents. He never charged for it. Why did he do it? He had low back pain and leg pain. He was told by two neurological institutes that if he didn't have surgery, he would have pain the rest of his life. Surgeons don't like to get surgery. So he never did. And he was healed by a guy named Gus Hemwall who worked with George Hackett. I mentioned George Hackett before. And uh, I don't know if his pain was always gone, but it was certainly controlled with prolotherapy. Herniated disc, whatever it was, didn't really matter that much. So he offered the treatment to his own, pediatric, his own patients after his own dramatic results with prolotherapy. It wasn't really his own patients, it was the parents. I want to read you this letter that he wrote because it is so powerful about what traditional medicine is all about. So this is the story of one prolotherapist. He's talking about himself. Although I have not been practicing surgery for about 15 years, I continue to see many people who have benefited from prolotherapy as a treatment for ligament laxity. That's what he called the issue. In my own case, I had been diagnosed by two separate neurological clinics as having intractable pain. That means pain that's not going to go away. My symptoms and the lack of sleep were affecting my work. I obtained complete relief from prolotherapy. After that, I began using it on the parents of my pediatric patients. I saw remarkable benefits when the method was used with proper indications. That means you don't use it on everybody. You don't use it on every part of the body. You select your patients carefully. Certainly, if, I use, if used properly, prolotherapy does no harm, can be of extraordinary benefit. I've changed many lives. This is a guy I think of like old Abe. I mean, he's pretty honest. He's not going out of his way to say this because he's making things up. Now, this is the key element here. Watching some of my colleagues fight the system for the payment for prolotherapy in their practices has led me to believe that those who make the decisions about what will and will not be covered by insurance plans are those surgical specialists who benefit most by operative procedures, which are frequently not indicated, expensive, and ineffective. Sincerely yours, C. Everett Coop, MD. Now, I get very angry I shouldn't anymore, but I get very reactive about this. It's sort of the white horse that I ride. Don't get surgery if you can help it. I had a shoulder surgery. It failed miserably. My shoulder was much worse for about a year after the surgery. I was doing orthopedic surgery in Hawaii at the time. My boss just said, let me scope it for you. I had a weightlifting injury. And I was like, cool, let's scope it. You know, it's just a little arthroscopic little things that poke in. A little camera goes in there. You shred off a little of the tissue that's getting in the way. And I woke up. I had a bad fever. My arm was about this big, full of, of fluid. Some vessel, probably lymphatic vessel, was cut. I had two big blisters on my shoulder after a couple days. And I was terrified. I thought I had an infection. It took a year for that shoulder to heal back to the place it was when it wasn't healed. It still wasn't any good. Learned about prolotherapy after that. Guess what? One shot, sitting in my bed, with my wife sitting next to me, who's a nurse practitioner, watching TV, I wake up the next morning and my shoulder is healed. It was a miracle for me. You know, the lights started going off. This is something that works. I then 
started begging my patients to let me practice on them.